Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and this beast right here is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra at £1,179, one of the most expensive smartphones of 2020 thus far, although also to be fair probably about the same as a couple of large lattes at your local Starbucks. But the Ultra is of course Samsung's most premium smartphone right now as well, packing some serious specs as well as a fresh new updated S Pen bunged in its bottom hole, but is it worth that sky high asking price? Well I've been using it as my full time smartphone for over a week now and here's my in-depth Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra review and for more than the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, yes, the Note 20 Ultra is an absolute whopper. Coming from this thing directly from the Google Pixel 4a was a serious shock to the system. I've got to admit, at first it kind of felt like I was a small child who nicked his dad's phone. After a couple of days though, I did find that I adapted to the size of this thing and thankfully, despite the fact it is flipping enormous, it doesn't really have that much of a heft to it. It's actually quite skinny as well, so I do actually kind of like the design. Thankfully, as usual, though, Samsung has chucked in loads of one-handed help. Even it realises that its phones are bloody massive, so for instance, you can swipe down the center at that bottom edge and it'll minimize everything the nifty one-handed mode making apps and everything much more bearable and once again you can pull down that notifications bar from anywhere on screen so it's not too often you'll find yourself groping for that top edge of this mammoth display and also I'm really really happy to have that matte finish on the back end of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as well it means you're not constantly having to whip out your hanky to give it a bit of a buff and it's rather resistant to fingerprints and other greasy scuff marks and yeah that mystic bronze color that is still very divisive. I happen to quite like it. I think it's rather fetching. Some people I show this phone to say it looks like cat sick. And not just cat sick, cat sick from a very sick cat. But if you want to conform to society, it's all good. Samsung's also offering a black and a white model, so just go grab one of those instead. And as for that weird creaky sound that I detected in the unboxing, uh, some very clever viewers pointed out in the comments that that's actually part of the camera housing rattling around in there. And yeah, that does indeed seem to be the case. Uh, still happens, still slightly disconcerting, but hey ho. And so far, after a week of use, the Note 20 Ultra seems pretty damn durable. You've got that pre-installed screen protector which has soaked up a couple of light scratches and then flip it around to that R send, that's still in perfect nick, not a single scratch or scuff to speak of. And of course you've got full IP68 water and dust resistance on the Note 20 Ultra as well for a bit of added reassurance. Now on the software front, what you've got on here is Samsung's One UI version 2.5, the latest freshest version of its launches slathered on top of Android 10. And as far as updates go, it's a fairly sedate one, few little tweaks, few nice little bits of polishing uh, going on on the surface level that to be honest most people probably wouldn't even notice. I actually had to get my old S20 Ultra and compare side by side to actually see what differences there were. You've got some worthwhile camera updates which I'll get to in a bit and you've also got improved support for third party launches the likes of Nova and Launcher stuff like that in case you get a bit bored of One UI. If you want a closer look at the software I've done a full One UI 2.5 tips and tricks guide so go check that out for some of my favourite bits in here. As for that ultrasonic fingerprint sensor built into the display well it's generally fine occasionally it can crap out if your fingers are just a little bit grubby uh, but generally uh, fine as for the face recognition sadly less reliable you've got to generally have pretty good lighting otherwise it does kind of struggle a fair bit as for that S Pen stylus, well, it's definitely an improvement. Using this thing to sketch on the screen feels incredibly natural now, almost like using a pen and paper, except for obviously the smooth nature of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's display. I also adore the way that you can record audio on this thing at the same time as your scribbler notes, and it all syncs up perfectly. I demonstrated it over on that One UI Tips and Tricks guide if you want to go check it out in action. It would have been really handy when I was doing like interviews for magazines and stuff like that. And it could be really handy for students and lectures as well, if lectures are actually still a thing that happens post-covid but of course if you already saw my galaxy note 20 ultra unboxing video you will know that i do not have a single creative bone in my body so the s pen doesn't really feel like it's made for me i'm not the kind of person who's going to be sketching uh, masterpieces while i'm sat on the bus going into bromley or something now while our american chums get the snapdragon 865 bunged in their galaxy note 20 ultras here in blighty we are lumbered with samsung's own exodus 990 chipset which doesn't perform as well in side-by-side -side tests but at least in the ultra here it is backed by 12 gigs of RAM. So I found the everyday running experience was of course absolutely fine. You can split screen with apps no problem. And you still got your 5G support on top of that Wi-Fi 6 connectivity as well. So as far as all that shenanigans goes, it's the mutts nuts. So to really test out the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, I donned my comfiest underpants, I cracked open a Fanta orange and I schooled a bunch of prepubescents on how to thoroughly kick my ass. Call of Duty and PUBG Mobile both ran well, again, as you'd hope, even after I cranked up the settings to those maximum levels. I saw only one little stutter in Call of Duty during an intensive two-hour gaming session, and that was basically it. 
The Note 20 Ultra did start to heat up pretty fast though. It could definitely be described as toasty after just 10 minutes of sweaty online action. Thankfully it didn't get much hotter than that, although I did quickly switch to a controller anyway just for extra comfort. It's definitely a little bit worrying how hot this thing gets. And the Note 20 Ultra's 240Hz touch response rate as well is perfect for if you're actually using those touchscreen controls, just like the S Pen, absolutely zero latency, which is great for the likes of PUBG. And that 6.9 inch display gives a very clear view of the action. I wasn't bothered once by that teeny selfie cam orifice thing. Unfortunately, it's the battery life that really is the Achilles heel of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, at the very least in this Exodus 990 version. I found that it was almost always completely drained before I face planted the pillow at the end of a long day. Generally around sort of five to six hours of screen on time, even fairly innocuous screen on time, is enough to drain that battery fully. And if you deign to try a bit of video calling on the Note 20 Ultra or basically anything that uses those cameras, well, you can expect to see that battery drop by a full quarter in just an hour of use. Do take note, however, that reports from our American chums say that the Snapdragon 865 model of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra seems to fare a bit better in the battery department, so that's definitely worth bearing in mind. And likewise, that Snapdragon alternative sounds like it doesn't heat up quite as badly as the Note 20 Ultra as well. The 20 Ultra is fine for just everyday use, but as soon as you start using the camera, doing a little bit of gaming or something like that, then the top end especially I've noticed gets very, very hot. Back to the good stuff though, and that 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED screen is proven brilliant for a bit of summer outdoors entertainment. You get super vibrant punchy colours, you've got that HDR10 Plus support, and it is very bright as well, so it's perfect for watching stuff outside, even when it's crazy sunny. I only really struggled with the proper dark scenes in the likes of Umbrella Academy. And while we're on the subject of that mighty screen as well, I always get a bit antsy with these edge-to-edge -edge smartphones where the, the screen actually curves around the very edges of the display because obviously your palms are going to intrude a little bit during your natural one-handed use. But thankfully here on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, I've never once had a problem with that. Samsung Software Smart seem to counter it really well. I've got to say though, I still can't get over the fact that you can't set that display to 120 hertz full time. You can only set it to adaptive. So so it'll swap between 60 and 120 when it feels like. And if you want to max out the resolution at WQHD+, you have to kill the 120 hertz entirely and stick to the standard 60 hertz setting. That's like paying 10 quid for an ice cream and then being told you can only have monkey's blood or sprinkles, not both. Bollocks to that, I want both, mate. This f***ing ice cream cost me a tenner. And the stereo speaker setup on this thing is rather tasty as well. You definitely get a good bit of sound blasted out of them, so no worries if your family are having a massive argument just a few feet away, you'll still be able to enjoy your bit of Netflix. And I've had absolutely no issues with the Bluetooth connectivity here on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra either, probably just as well because there's no actual headphone jack. So now let's finish off, as always, with a squint at that camera tech, and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra boasts a 108 megapixel primary lens with built-in optical image stabilization. You also get a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens offering a 5 times optical zoom or up to 50 times hybrid zoom. So by default, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra will shoot your photos with a 4000 by 3000 pixel resolution, or you can quickly and easily bump it up to the maximum powers of that 108 megapixel lens and shoot at 12000 by 9000 for grabbing insane levels of detail, although each photo will take up 30 megs of space. Also at that 108 megapixel level, you don't get the same precision focus, so some close-up subjects will actually be more fuzzy. It's definitely best used for the likes of landscapes. Samsung's autofocus though, which uses a combination of PDAF and laser Laser autofocus is shit hot. This could generally cope with mental youngsters, although too much erratic motion does occasionally result in a blurry shot, which the Note 20 Ultra can at least identify and warn you about once the photo's been taken. Colour details are quite rich, even with Samsung's scene detection mode switched off, although not to a hideous degree. I actually quite like vivid pics, so I like these results. As for the HDR chops, well, once again, not great. They're fine in low light, but in brighter conditions, I definitely saw a fair few instances of oversaturation, which makes the final snap look less than brilliant. It kind of saps some of the colour and the general texture detail. At night time, the results are fine, though. In low light, you can still get plenty of detail and a bit of colour action on the go. And of course, you've got that dedicated night mode, which brightens everything up, although it's still not as good as Google's effort on the likes of the Pixel 4a, which captures really accurate colours at the same time. As for that zoom lens, well, you get a five times optical zoom, and it is impressive up to around the sort of 10 times hybrid zoom level, then things do start to get a bit fuzzy. Even if you stay as still as humanly possible, you're going to get a blurry, crappy, grainy shot. But where the Note 20 Ultra really impresses and beats most rivals is its video recording chops. You can shoot up to 8K resolution home movies or 4K at up to 60 frames per second, and it all looks really, really good when played back on a telly. Again, you get quite vivid colours, and the focus works really, really well with active, crazy R subjects like this one. 
The HDR chops seem a bit better for video on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as well, especially when you're using that HDR10 Plus mode, which serves up some beautiful contrast and functions well at that 4K resolution, although you can't use it at 60 FPS. And with certain applications, including unfortunately my video editor, which don't fully support Samsung's HDR10 Plus file format, you get this washed out misty look. I've also got to mention that the audio capture is perfect as well. I especially love the ability to muffle audio coming from a particular direction using the Pro Video Mode. This works really, really well. And you can also uh, pan zoom in nice and smoothly now as well using that Pro Video Mode. Great stuff indeed. You can zoom up to 20 times max and the focus does start to struggle a bit at that maximum level. But once again, at the sort of 10 times halfway point, it was absolutely fine. In fact, between that HDR10 Plus mode and the fact that you can shoot 8K resolution video at a 21 by 9 cinematic ratio, Sure, means that basically the Note 20 Ultra is my favourite smartphone for shooting video right now alongside the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. Flip around to the front and that 10 megapixel single lens selfie cam does an alright job for your bit of insta action. Again, struggles with quite bright lights, you might want to sort of avoid that whenever possible. But you've got all the usual portrait mode shenanigans and all that other good stuff to play around with. And good news if you're into a bit of vlogging because you can actually shoot 4K resolution footage at a full 60 frames per second here on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which you can't do on very many smartphones phones at all although this is of course a super premium handset so you'd kind of expect the best so that right there is my full final verdict on the samsung galaxy note 20 ultra samsung's most premium smartphone right now one of the most expensive blows of 2020 and i would say if you don't sleep on a massive sack full of cash and you don't see the s pen as an absolutely essential tool then you might want to look elsewhere but left money in a thing and you got your heart set on the note 20 ultra well i definitely say try and hunt down the snapdragon alternative if you live here in blighty because you should see less heating issues and better battery performance. So that's what I think after using the Note 20 Ultra as my personal handset for a full week. But what are your thoughts? It'd be great to hear your opinions on this absolute behemoth. Definitely slap them down in the comments below. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers, everyone. Love you.